Hello there, Ben Bowers, the Spirit Specialist, and I am here today to talk to you about Torovague, the brand new inaugural release from a new distillery on the Isle of Skye. But before I tell you what the whiskey itself tastes like, let me give you a little bit of information about the distillery itself. The Torovague distillery is sited at a converted farmstead on the southeast of the Isle of Skye. It's only the second distillery to be licensed on the island, the first being the very well known and very highly regarded Talisker. The distillery was set up by Marussia Beverages, a drinks distributor who also created the Mossburn brand of independently bottled whiskies, and it's been in operation since January 2017. A team of experienced brewers, distillers and malters were brought on board to mentor a team of nine apprentices, most of whom are from the local area, who would then become the distilling team in their own right. The current output is around one and a half million bottles per year. Torovague used Concerto Barley, with an initial phenol level of about 55 to 60 ppm, which becomes a residual amount of around 16 ppm in the bottle. The Torovague 2017 Legacy Series inaugural release has no colour added, no chill filtration, and is bottled at 46% ABV. Right then, so let's give you an indication of what we're looking at in terms of the liquid itself. Now, this uh, is actually a bottle from a customer of mine. Um, I got a very, very limited amount. To be honest, I was amazed I got an allocation at all. Uh, and this customer is a good friend of mine who was always gonna open the bottle and has very, very kindly said, look, if you wanna take a little bit out to do a little review and try it yourself, you can do, because I've not actually got a bottle of this myself. So here's just a little splash just to try it because I want to leave him as much as I possibly can. Now, what I would say is I love the bottle. Um, it's an interesting shape. It's quite kind of thin, but it's got a nice kind of angle to it. It feels really nice. It's just one of the bottles that just feels good in your hand. So I'm impressed with the packaging already. So like, like I said, bottled at 46%. There's quite a bit on the packaging itself. So here's the box as well. Um, and they talk about uh, well-tempered peat. Now, being on the Isle of Skye, you've got a very highly regarded, very well-known distiller in Talisker, and there is absolutely no doubt that this is gonna endlessly get compared to Talisker. Talisker, quite peppery, full-on. It's a heavily peated whiskey, but it doesn't quite have the medicinal notes that um, the Isla whiskies do, but it tends to get thrown in that, oh, it's a big peaty, smoky whiskey. And I feel a little bit sorry for Torovague, just in the fact that a lot of people are gonna instantly try and compare this to Talisker. Now, I've had the tiniest little nose of this prior to filming this video, and I can tell you straight off the bat, a comparison with Talisker isn't really fair. We really need to make sure that we make this whiskey stand on its own merits. So, let me give you an indication of what we're playing around with here. On the nose, it's quite gentle. There is a pepperiness, um, but it's not too in your face. There's hints of sea salt. There's like rock candy sugar as well. There's a there's a really nice gentle sweetness to it. It's almost kind of like a, a hard candy. Little bit of like um, you know those hard pear drops that you get in like ten penny ten p bag sweets. Ten penny bag sweets. Yeah, that's correct. Although nowadays they're probably about one pound fifteen with inflation. But there is a really nice kind of uh, sweetness in the background as well as a soft smoky peatiness a little bit of black pepper a little bit of sea salt in there there's a definite kind of uh, sea coast element in there it's gentle it's soft i really like it it's quite it's quite subtle and this is one where instantly people are going to be going, oh, it's sky well talisker is really big and beefy well this isn't big and beefy it's not trying to be absolutely not I really like that. There is a lot going on in the nose. Let's hope it's going on in the palate. And what is on the nose really does continue through. The smoky element, that sort of peppery, it's not iodine, but there is a, a peppery smokiness that's in there, is a little bit more pronounced on the palate than it is uh, on the nose but in a good way, it's not overpowering, it's actually supporting the sweetness that's there. Again, that kind of like pear drop, hard candy, almost, it reminds me a little bit of like those um, hard cola cubes that you would get as a kid. There is a definite kind of hard candy sweetness, but it works brilliantly with this gentle smokiness. Well-tempered peat is sort of their catchphrase, and I get why they've said that, because it does have a smokiness to it, but it's refined, it's quite, delicate. Do you know, this actually reminds me a little bit 
of the smokiness of uh, Hakushu 12 year old, the Japanese uh, whiskey from the Suntory. Um, that has a smokiness to it that is elegant and refined and I absolutely love. This is not in your face. This is very, very subtle. For something so young, I am stunned at how good this is. There is not much youth in this. I would easily kind of put this at a 10 or a 12 year old if I was trying this blind. Um, I'm not sure where I kind of put it in terms of region. I'd, I'd probably say, I don't know, maybe like a 12 year old Bunnahavan, something like that if I was trying this blind. I would not put this at like three and a half years old, three years old, that sort of thing. There's a really nice kind of creamy mouthfeel to it. The peat is working brilliantly with the sort of sweet cream that's in there. Um, it's matured in first fill bourbon casks and that's what's giving you that creaminess. I'm, I've no doubt that that first fill bourbon cask is, is giving that rich creamy vanilla character. Brilliantly balanced. Bottled at 46% and I think it's probably bang on. It's uh, apparently a limited batch from uh, 100 barrels so this is really really highly in demand i've been having phone calls on a regular basis going are you getting any in do you have any can i buy some please um it, the rrp is 49.99 uh, and i actually think that is a pretty damn good price for a really really good whiskey particularly when it's an inaugural release that i have absolutely no doubt that people will be trying to snap up in order to put towards um investment i would say to those people please don't do that open it it's fantastic if you are just going to buy a bottle of this put it on a shelf stick it on an auction site next week to try and make 100 quid out of it well okay you've got an extra 50 quid in your pocket but actually you've you've missed out on what is a fantastic whiskey um and if this is what it's like at like three years three and a half years whatever we're looking at aging wise I can't wait to see what they're like when they get to 10 years old and beyond. There is a uh, plan for a number of releases over the next few years, so you'll be able to see the development of it um, up to the point where we get a 10 and then we'll get the age statements after that. Um, I can remember having um, some of the uh, young Ardbegs, the uh, range that they did where it was essentially sort of four, five, six, seven year old up to the 10. And you could sort of see where the progression of Ardbeg was going, but some of the young Ardbegs were still tight, still young. I am well impressed with how brilliantly balanced this is, the subtlety of it, the finesse. It really belies its age and this is an incredible advertisement for what this distillery can become. Um, I really, really like it. I implore anybody that buys a bottle to please open it, share it with friends, uh, this is a good friend of mine who's bought a bottle from me and has allowed me to open it and I would implore you to share it with your friends because there are not many bottles of this available. There are going to be a lot of people that are going to miss out on this actually drinking it and I really do recommend you drink it because I think it is absolutely fantastic. So to the nine whiskey makers at the Torrevay Distillery, I salute you. You have done a phenomenal job straight off the bat. I really look forward to um, the other releases that are gonna come. Unfortunately, we have to wait quite a while for them to all turn up, um, but I will be very much looking forward to them arriving on my shelves. Um, so Toro Vague, 2017 Legacy Series, highly recommended. If you can get a bottle of it, do so and share it with people that are unable to get a bottle of it because this is whiskey that needs to be shared and not hoarded. Um, fantastic stuff. Um, Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.